Welcome to One Friend Focus, where we focus in on transforming the world one friend at a time. Now, my name is Bill Nissen, and through my years of being a pastor and my years of business leadership, I have learned that the most important element needed in life is friendship. So welcome to this podcast discussing everything about friendship and all the wonderful things that surround this topic. But as we get started, I can hear your thinking right now. Friendship, that's the most important thing? That is the point I'll be making through the next few podcasts. If you're feeling like you want to know more intense, really digging deep topics that were the the biggest concern in the heart of Jesus, then you're going to want to stick around and listen to everything we discuss on not only this podcast, but following podcasts. I truly believe this is the most needed discussion in this hour. And I'll show you why here in a minute. But this is not just a warm, fuzzy discussion about uh, how to have fun with friends and what to do when you have friends over. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about here is the most critical element needed to impact the world with the love of Jesus Christ. Now, to make this point, I'm going to cover two areas on this particular podcast. The first one is just focusing on what has not been working, and then focusing on what has worked. Because if I told you that I could show you detail upon detail an exact strategy given by Jesus Christ himself, our Lord and Savior, laying out a plan to transform the world, wouldn't you want to know it? You know, most of what we hear Jesus share is talking about, you know, the kingdom of God through parables and, and you know, the Sermon on the Mount. But there are, are two specific passages that I have been studying for years that I truly believe unlock the whole issue of how to build his church. How to create a transformative environment that can change the world, and it is through friendship. But to make that case, I want to talk about that first area uh, right away. Because one of the things that I did early on as I was traveling the country uh, speaking at different churches, let alone my own uh, church I was working at, was I would ask a survey. I would say the vast majority of times I would ask a survey when I would start teaching in these churches. And the survey would go something like this. Of those of you that have given your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, how have you come to know him? Did you come to know him through a crusade? So, you know, were you reached to, were you exposed to the gospel through a crusade like, you know, Billy Graham or Lowell Lundstrom or Louis Palau or, or somebody like that where you went forward on an altar call, prayed a prayer, gave your life to Jesus Christ in that setting? And I remember one of the first times I asked this question was in a church in Bridgman, Michigan. And there was about 200 people in this church uh, at the time. And I asked that question. And of that question about, did you come to know Christ through a crusade? Four, no, three people raised their hand out of 200. And I said, praise God, you guys came to the kingdom through that methodology. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Second group, how many of you came to know Christ through a campus outreach, you know, where they're preaching on a corner while you're going to classes in college? And in that case, we've had zero people say that they came through to Christ that way. Now, as I've gone to other churches, you know, there's been a few people that have. And then the third option was, did you come to know Christ through street evangelism or door-to-door evangelism, something like that? And only one person raised their hand, and that was Guess who? Me. I did. I had a guy come to my door um, after visiting a church up in Rosemont, Minnesota, 
And that's how I came to Christ. So I was the fourth person to raise my hand. That's why I said four earlier. So three people through a crusade, none through colleges, one through uh, street evangelism or door-to-door evangelism. So I went to that group, about 200 people. I said, okay, now, that's awesome. Those three things, crusades, campus ministries, and street evangelism, door-to-door evangelism, are the primary methods of evangelism that we've taught in the church. But we have a glaring disparity here. Only four of us came through those doors. So how did everybody else here come to Jesus Christ, the saving faith of Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? So I asked the final question. How many of you came to know Christ through a friend or through a family member who was a friend. And everybody else's hands went up. It was like a forest of arms. It was crazy. Everybody else's hands went up when I talked about friendship. That's how they came to Christ. And only four out of 200, so that's what, 2%, came to Christ through what we traditionally teach. And so then I asked this question, As you've been involved in church, how many times have you been trained or taught how to not only make a friend, but how to be a friend? And everybody agreed that that was a glaring disparity. We don't focus in on that one thing, which is the most important element. And it's one that Jesus taught in Scripture. And we'll be talking in detail about that through trainings that I'm doing, but also through our discussions on this podcast. So that is the problem, is what we've been doing isn't even how people are coming into the church. And what we need to do is something that we are losing the art of how to do. And we'll be resurrecting that art through these podcasts. But that's the first area. That's what's not been working. We have not seen the Western church grow in a long time. And part of that is this whole element of friendship. You know, there's other parts, fervency and prayer, you know, of really seeking God and asking His Spirit to come and move. Obviously, those things are really, really important, but so is friendship. So, now let's talk about what does work. So this next area is something I, I need some um, patience with because I've this is all completely from memory. Because here, here's my story. Um, I was pastoring at a church, and we had filing cabinet after filing cabinet full of cassette tapes from the entire history of this church, from the beginning when it first started to meet in homes to where it was at that time, is we had hundreds of cassette tapes that were the recordings, the masters of the sermons from the meetings. And I was cleaning those filing cabinets out because of a few reasons. One, we were running out of space. And so we needed to clean out older cassette tapes that people wouldn't probably ever want to get a copy of. And I was going to store them in boxes and store them somewhere else. I also was taking time listening to some of those because I wanted to get a sense of the history of the church so I'd know how to pray for our future. But while I was doing all of this cleaning, house cleaning, so to speak, I opened up one drawer, and in the back was a bundle of cassette tapes that were just rubber banded together. Now, what struck me about this was that all the cassette tapes of the masters from the church were all very professionally made with the labels and you know typewritten topics and speakers. But this was just handwritten stuff on blank labels. But what was written on there was really catching my attention. They were basically uh, just raw recordings that somebody took while they were, um, and they might have been copies too, but, but while they were teaching about what God was doing in India, you know, I think it was in, back in the 60s, uh, but this was a, a seminar that was taking place in North Africa. 
And as I started listening to the cassettes, it became clear that this recording was basically just somebody speaking and the, and the ambient sound of them speaking was picked up by a content, condenser microphone on one of those old rectangular tape decks that we used to have when we were younger. So this was very unprofessional. It wasn't from a lavalier microphone or anything like that. It was just a condenser mic on a rectangular cassette deck. So I knew that this was really raw stuff, but I was really intrigued by the topics and the stories that were being shared. So I listened to all of these cassette tapes. And so everything I'm sharing at this point is from memory from watching that because I haven't been able to find them since. But what I heard on these cassette tapes changed my life. And I've been looking for them ever since, and I have never found them. And how they changed my life was telling a story. There was a gentleman who was, um, I, I guess, sent to India. Again, I think it was the 60s, from his denomination to start four or five churches. Now, he was doing that the traditional way we do in the West. You know, you, know, you find leaders and you set up a senior pastor and deacons and elders and boards and and. And he was doing it in a hostile part of India. Northern India at that time was very hostile toward the gospel. Southern India was more Christianized, but northern India was pretty intense. And he did five churches there. And within six months, I believe, all five pastors were assassinated by groups that were not wanting this to happen. And this gentleman was devastated. And he went to Singapore to recover and to grieve and pray. And the, and the Lord spoke to him and basically told him to come back. But this time, when you come back to these villages, all you're going to do is Luke 10 and 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. That's all you're going to do. And we'll discuss those verses in other podcasts. So he went back to India. He went into this one village that he had been to before. And he was, I believe he was selling like blocks of ice for like ice boxes that people had in their homes at the time. And... Um, Whatever it was he was doing, it got them into the homes. And eventually he found a family that really connected with him. And he led the father to the Lord. And then the, the wife and children you know, came to know, know the Lord. And he really invested in that relationship and just built a strong bond, built a strong friendship. And after a while, he went to the gentleman and you know, he was walking with said, Are you enjoying these times that we're having together? And he goes, this is life to me. This is my oxygen. And he goes, well, here's what I'm willing to do. This is, a, I believe, a mandate the Lord gave me. That's what I remember him saying here. It was, I will commit one day a week with you just to walk with you and, and seek the Lord for the rest of my life. One day a week for the rest of my life. And whatever we get from the Lord, all I need you to do is in equal measure, whatever we get from the Lord you give to somebody else. Meaning, I don't want you to water down and just give them little bullet points. Whatever we get, all of it needs to go to somebody else. And if you don't pass it on to somebody else, that's the Second Timothy 2.2 2 part. If you don't pass it on to somebody else, then I have to stop meeting with you. That's the only deal is I want to do this with you from now on because I believe God is going to do mighty things. But I can't if you aren't going to share it. Diligently share it. And so he eventually found five families. So basically, it seems like he had uh, two days a week off. So in 12 years, he only had to stop twice. But in 12 years, those five families became, now these numbers may not be accurate, but this is how it impacted me. It was something like this. Well over a million new Christians and over 40,000 congregations in 12 years. Because of the viral, viral growth of passing on what you've been getting. And he didn't teach them how to start churches. All he did was Luke 10 and 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. That's all he gave them. And then whatever the Lord showed them as they were together. It worked. Millions of people came to Christ simply by making and being a friend. So we now know what doesn't work through what we've done here in the West, but we also have a picture of what has worked and changed the whole area in this world. 
And as I've been walking with the Lord these these you know twenty five years, twenty seven years now actually, um, I am fully convinced that this is this is a strategy that the Lord has for us. And I'm going to break down all those things in other podcasts. We're going to discuss other aspects. We're going to interview people that have been doing things like this and how they've seen it work. We're going to be interviewing people that. Um, have other insights on this. So it's not just going to be me talking to you every week. It's going to be us really getting our head around what the Lord is doing in this hour. I truly believe because of how I've implemented this in some relationships and what I've seen others do, this is the roadmap Jesus has given us to transform the world. We're not going to see it done politically. I'm not saying not to be politically involved. But I think we can see just, you know, by trying to change laws, all that does is polarize two groups to fight against one another. If we truly want to win people over, we're going to have to do it one friend at a time. So that's going to be the main focus of what we'll be discussing through these podcasts. Like I said, some of them will be strategic, you know, conversations. Some of them will be sharing stories of how this has impacted others. Others are going to be, going to be just looking at our condition in this nation today and what we have to overcome in order to see these changes take place. So there's going to be a lot of different things here, but they're all going to be important as far as really grabbing a hold of what the Lord wants us to do right now in this important topic called friendship. So that's our focus, to help every believer make one friend and then to help them make one friend and pass on what we get together. Now, I I can hear you right now. I've had people say, well, Bill, I'm not that strong of a Christian to do this level of involvement. We will discuss all those things, but here's what I will say. The basic element of what we're talking about as far as making friends and being friends is something that every Christian can do. And I'm I'm going to take you through scriptures and I'm going to take you through trainings, invite you to trainings as well, that are going to break this all down for you so you know that you know that you know that this is something you can do. What you're going to have to remove from your mind is what you've traditionally seen as evangelism. Because that is not what we're doing. What we're doing here right now is simply making one friend. Which is why we call this One Friend Focus. So I, I really hope you will sincerely pray about sticking with these podcasts, getting your head around this. Because I truly believe it will transform the way you see the church and how you even see your own walk. If you simply commit to engaging with us on this conversation. So, Lord, I just pray for everybody that's listening to my voice right now that you would just spark a, an interest, a desire for them to know this deeply, this truth. You have given us a strategy to transform the world, and we want to give our attention to your teachings So on that note, I just uh, encourage you to stick around for other podcasts and other discussions and other trainings. And I look forward to seeing you next time.